Durant's got to put it up, gets it off the time. Off the mark, no good, Hunter the rebound. Celtics have a timeout, decide not to use it here. Brown the drive. Jalen Brown kicks it out. Smart fakes. Inside, Tatum spins. Celtics get up on him. He can very well elevate here. Realizes he has the time. His patient gets into the seams, delivers the ball point pass to Tatum, and he gets it off in the nick of time. And when you close there, it's easy to say, but you got to close under control. And Tatum finishes with 31. My mistake saying waving it off. They were wanted to make sure that came before it was so close to the final buzzer. That was Jason Tatum. That was the Celtics yesterday getting the uh, one point win over the Brooklyn Nets yesterday uh, in walk off fashion here in Boston. Here, Jason Tatum getting, nailing the easiest, probably the easiest layup probably ever in a playoff game that I could remember. Uh, but this is the uh, let us interrupt you NBA post wrap review. Uh, just, you know, just the fashion that. Tatum walked off of that yesterday. It was it was trying to pull up the uh, clip and switch it over to the uh, poking wrap, but it's um, not working, which no surprise there. Uh, anyway, uh, first round yesterday had some awesome games yesterday. Uh, both uh, the Nets Celtics probably one of the, one of the most nail biting games I've ever watched when it comes to NBA playoffs. Uh, Hawks Heat yesterday. Uh, Kind of a runaway from Miami. Miami just simply just ran away and dominated the Hawks 115-91. Like I said, the Celtics yesterday went by one point yesterday, 115-114 yesterday. And the Bucs beat the Bulls yesterday, 93-86. This game was a little sloppy from both sides, from both teams. Uh, the Suns beat the Pelicans 110-99 uh, last night. So first round, awesome for both from both teams here so far. And I was kind of I, I was kind of wrong about the uh, you know so far some of the games really I think it was wrong about the Saturday cap last night I was really wrong about the uh, who's winning game one between Memphis and Minnesota that was really the only one I was wrong about really uh, so far um, good news is the Bucks played great defense last night the bad news is they overall I, I really thought that uh, some of, some of them struggled as of last night I'm actually gonna get started with the first game that was on yesterday which was the Hawks and Heat game yesterday. This was the blowout game, as I just mentioned just now. The Heat just ran away with this game. I mean, this was a no contest here. So let's get started with this one. I would say midway through the first quarter here, uh, Kyle Lowry, uh, the game's tied at seven. Lowry makes a layup. Later on, the Heat take possession again. P.J. Tucker nails a three-pointer, 23-footer. P.J. Tucker again makes another basket right now, now 14-7. Bam Bam Adaibo made it a uh, 21 foot jump shot. It's now 16 to 7. And there's a runaway with us now at this point. Later on here, right now, um, Dwayne Dedman makes a seven foot shot. Tyler here with the assist. Um, Heater now up by 10 now. It's now 23 to 13. Second quarter, Kevin Huter makes a 26 foot three point shot. It's now 26 20. Butler retaliates by making a driving layup. It's now 28 to 20. Tyre Hero makes a pull-up jump shot now 30 to 20. The Heat are just run away with this at this point. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's a no contest here. Lowry, late second quarter, three-pointer, bam. 53-34. Gave Vincent again here for the Heat. Another three-pointer. Now it's 59-38. Going into the half, it was 59-40. So the Heat are up by 19 at the end of the half. Third quarter. Jimmy Butler driving to the lane. For a layup, it's now 67-43. I mean, this game is pretty much over with by the start of the third quarter. I mean, this was this was really no contest in this game. Uh, fourth quarter, John Collins makes a three-point right now to try to get the Hawks back into it. It's now 89-68. Duncan Robinson, forget about it. 26 for a three-point shot. That's it. Um, at that point, the Heat are up by 29 points. They're still running away with it. Omar Uvistin makes an alley oop that was assisted by Gabe Vincent. And that's really all she wrote here. Heat get the win, 115 91. 
Simple as that. I mean, this was a dominant win. By the se- by the third by the second quarter, right now it was already over. By the start of the third, I would say by the start of the third quarter, not, not even like two minutes into the third quarter, this game was already in wraps up wrap up mode here. Think about that for a minute. Um, and this is a team last year in the first round that got swept, and now this year they're the number one seed in the Eastern Conference. Miami is. Uh, PJ Tucker had 16 points, five rebounds, one assist, six for eight for overall in the game, four for four for three. Butler was nine for 15, one for two for three with 21 points, six rebounds, four assists. Uh, Bama Daibo, who really didn't do much in this game, surprisingly, was one for five. I didn't think he would be one for five in this game, but he was. He had six points. It didn't sound like size really matter here. It was just trying to slow down Jimmy Butler and not allowing that too many threes, but the heat, but he just simply dominated in this game. They were eighteen. They were eighteen for thirty-eight for three in this game. Vincent one was two for seven off the bench from three, three for eight overall, and eight points for them. Robinson was uh, at twenty-seven points. I think he started. I think he may have started in the game. I'm not really sure. I think he may have started here, and they just took him out really towards the end there. Butler was the longest man in that game. Kyle Ray had ten points, two for four for three, four for eight overall, nine assists, four rebounds. That was all she wrote for Miami. As far as Atlanta goes, Gallinari, 17 points, uh, 114 points. Trey Young, 1 for 12 in this game, 0 for 7 for 3. Could not make a three-pointer to save his life. Just, that was it. That's all she wrote. I mean, it was not a good game for Atlanta. Next game, probably the best game of the entire weekend. The Brooklyn Nets at the Boston Celtics. I almost got tickets to go to this game, believe it or not. Kind of ironic how I... How it was Easter yesterday, and I couldn't go to the game. Uh, this was a Kyrie Irving show. You know, give credit what credit is due to Boston for picking up the, the game one in the end with Jason Tatum, which I'll get to in a second. But it, this was a Kyrie Irving show. I mean, Irving was just with the three pointers, just drilling them, drilling them, drilling them, drilling them. He was six for 10 in this game, 12 for 20 overall, had 42 minutes, and he had 39 points. Kevin Durant was struggling, though, could not hit a shot to save his life. Finished the game with nine for 24. Still had 23 points, four rebounds, three assists. Irving had a six assists with five rebounds in the 39 per, nine performance in 42 minutes. Brown had, had five points. I don't know what the hell happened with Brown yesterday. I mean, he did absolutely nothing after being two for three and, and one for one for a three, one three-pointer. Seth Curry had three for seven, one for four for three, nine points. It, this was a straight-up Kyrie Irving show. I'm going to fast-forward right to, to this game here. And how it, how the how Al Horford here just was an enforcer in this game, and he was a difference maker in this game. He had 15 rebounds in the uh, performance that he had yesterday. He had 20 points yesterday, 15 rebounds, two assists. Overall, this man was unstoppable yesterday. And you want to talk about the Celtics not having size yesterday? Al Horford said, "I am the Bama Debo yesterday. That was a Bama Debo that should have played yesterday for the Heat yesterday against the Hawks, but." I mean, I, I guess Al Horford wanted to prove that he's not all done, not all washed up. And <laughs> my God, he proved it. My God, he proved it. Tatum had, uh, Tatum had 31 points yesterday in his performance yesterday. This was a man that just was uh, not really, I, I would say, <laughs> a difference maker overall in, in every way you can count. I mean, this is a man that was dependable in this scenario. He was dependable. Tatum was the man yesterday, 3 for 7 for 3, 31 points. Al Horford. 8 for 13, 2 for 2 for 3, 15 rebounds, 20 points. Marcus Martin with 20 points. Jalen Brown with 23 points. Brown struggled a little bit in this game. Smart, I would say, was average in this game. I think it did a little bit better than Brown in this game. Um, Daniel Tyes was just a, was just an enforcer here, forcing people, you know, boxing people out, trying his best. But he's not <laughs> physical enough, in my opinion, to be a big power forward or a center at this point on this team. The fact that we took him back, I was kind of nervous about during the trade deadline. We'll have to admit that. But let's get the, let's get down to the nitty gritty here. This was a this was the Jason Tatum and Kyrie Irving one on one showdown here. Let's get let's fast forward to this to this uh, play here at the end here. I will play the clip right now. Let me just get through the um, midpoint here of the third. Kevin Durant had a seventeen foot running pull up jump shot. Tatum with a step back. Uh, Marcus Smart made a dunk. Kevin Durant just trying to get back to his glory days. It just the Celtics were running away with it. It was a back and forth affair. Celtics were up by at least by as much as uh, 
15 points that are up by in this game. Nets will get back into it. Uh, Jalen Brown gets a two, makes a two-point shot. Jason Tatum with a three. Bangs at home. This is where Kyrie Irving came alive here in the fourth quarter. Three-point shot, 98-95. Kyrie Irving, 98-97. Kevin Durant with a three-pointer to get the this, this Nets the lead. Kyrie Irving again, making a diving, driving layup. Jalen Brown makes a driving dunk. <laughs> Nick Claxton gets a tip shot. Brown retaliates with a two-point shot. Kyrie Irving nails a three. And this is where I was nervous, nervous the most here. But the Celtics were on a 13-7 to run to end this game. Uh, I'm going to fast forward towards that right now. This is after Kyrie Irving made a three-point shot. This is after he got his 39th point. Durant misses a three to put the game away. It was a 28-foot shot. And uh, I will play the clip one more time here on YouTube if I can actually just pull it up here real quick on my end. Um, but this was a awesome game-winning shot here. Hopefully this does not go back to the app. The future and waits for it, it did. So we refuse to wait for it. Stay Went back to the house. That's fucking two. Durant's got to put it up. Gets it off the time. Off the mark. No good. Hook for the rebound. Celtics have a timeout. Decide not to use it here. That was the uh, sound of Mike Breen, Mark Jackson, and Jeff Van Gunny calling that game yesterday. Mike Breen on the last call of that game as the Brooklyn Nets lose game one. They're now down 1 0 in this series of the Celtics. 115, 114 <clears throat> was the final there in that game. Next game, well, you got the Bulls and the Bucks. This was a very, very uh, uh, tight game, to say the least here. First quarter, open up with a 6 nothing lead. Giannis onto the coupe ball. Well, you know what? He can only dunk it now be a force if he can shoot a three-pointer, too. Just remember that. 9 nothing run to start with, with about 10 minutes into the game. Uh, Nikolai Vujic made a three-pointer. Chris Milton pull up or, or 13-foot two-point shot. DeRozan with a 23-foot jumper. It was only for a two, 11 to five. Brooke Lopez made a three points now, 14 to five. 14 to five. Giannis, two back-to-back -back shots here, made a dunk. Two-point shot from four feet out. Wesley Matthews with a three. It's 21 to seven. Second quarter. Nikolai Vucic with a, a two-pointer there. It's now 34-23. Giannis with, with a uh, with a three-foot dunk. And I believe Giannis in this game had 27 points. This guy was just a, a freak of nature in this game, just making three at the th making three point shot at the three-point shot. In the game over Giannis, it was one for four for three, but 10 for 19 overall. He had 16 rebounds in this game. He was out. I mean, you could say right now Brooke Lopez and – Giannis are the enforcers here. If you, if you can't stop these guys, I don't know what to tell you. Anyway, third quarter, Zach Levine, step back, 16-footer, nails that one. Bulls pull into four. They had a rally They had a rally late in the second quarter. Later on, Wesley Matthews, 23-foot, three-pointer, makes it, assisted thanks to Chris Middleton. Giannis with two free throws made right now. The Bucks uh, are now back up by eight. Late third quarter, game is tied. Kobe White, three-pointer, nailed it. Bulls take their first lead of the game. It's now 67-64. Bucks come right back, though, take the lead right back. Now 69-66, thanks to True Holiday. Fourth quarter, I'm going to say about, I'm going to scroll it down to the, towards the end of this here. Uh, Patrick Willis makes a two-pointer there, a two-point layup. 85-82. Brooke Lopez makes a tip shot there, 87-82. This game was pretty much over and done at that point. Thanks to Brooke Lopez. And there were some free throws made at the end of this game. Bucks win 93-86. I'm going to take you right to the uh, results here, box score-wise, and who did good here. Uh, DeRozan, not so hot in this game. Six for 25 in a game, over two for three, 18 points, eight rebounds, six assists. He had a bad night. This was his worst game of the year so far for him. Uh, overall, 
Vujic, same thing here. 24 points, 2 for 10, though, for 3. 17 rebounds, 9 for 27. Not really good. Levine, also terrible in this game. 18 points, 10 rebounds. Um, 2 for 10 for 3, 6 for 19 overall. Giannis, I got to say, Giannis was not that good at the three-point game. I was kind of disappointed with Giannis and Chris Middleton here. Chris Middleton had 11 points for the Bucs. Um, four for 13, one for seven for three. Brooke Lopez was one for five. And Chu Holiday was one for four. This was not a good three-point shooting night here. Wesley Matthews only had six points. They should have fed him the ball more. You know, I, I, know, I know Giannis is, is the face of that team, and he's got to make a statement here, and, and they're at home, and he's trying to be this, this dominant uh, figure. But this was not the night for it. Although, granted, he had 16 rebounds for the Bucs last night. But Porz had 10 points off, off the bench, two for five for three. Overall, the Bucs were 10 for 38 for three. The Bulls were 7 for 37. This this is this has been a common theme now the, for the last few days here. Um for the uh for some games lost here. Too many threes. Too many threes. Too many missed opportunities, too many mistakes. And this is not the only game that 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 had that. But that right there in a nutshell, and you can make the argument that the that the Bulls did not play well yesterday in this game at all with a three-point shooting. Neither did the Bucs. The Bucs weren't really that convincing. They had a huge lead, and they blew it, and they were able, able to manage to get it back down to, like, seven-point win. I, I I don't see that team, you know, this is another an issue now with this Buck team now where they're giving up big leads here, and they're just letting people blow them out. I'm sorry, but that's not how you do things. That's not how you should win games. You should be able to close teams out like this. If they're having a bad night like this, they should not only lose by seven points. I'm just being honest here. Milwaukee was, I think, at the end there, I don't know if they were going soft, if they were just tired, or what the story was, but that was some sloppy basketball. Chris Middleton especially, just missing those three-pointers. Lopez missing the three-pointers. Giannis not getting in there in the three-point groove. And really the difference was in this game was that there were a lot of missed shots by Giannis. That's what was concerning me, especially if you're in the paint. I mean, that, that's not good. Anyway, but the Bulls overall looked terrible in this game. They looked worse for wear. I think they looked worse shooting. I mean, never mind a seven for 37 performance behind a three-point line. Never mind that. But you got to make the you got to make the other shots. You got to make the two-point shots. You got to make your your jumpers, step backs fadeaways, layups, whatever you got to do, you got to make them. And if this was not the night for it. Phoenix Suns take on the New Orleans Pelicans. My word, the, the one where I get, the one person I can think of here is Paul because he had a great night last night. Classic Chris Paul performance. Brilliant game from him last night. And it, it just for a guy who's been out for at least 10 weeks, he came back last night like, like, like it was nothing. Game over up with a Devin Booker three-point shot. Thanks to Chris Paul, 28-footer. Nailed it. DeAndre Ayton made a two-point uh, two shot from 12 feet out. Uh, Ether. Valentino has made an 11-footer earlier for the Pelicans. Uh, later on, Booker again makes a two-point shot. It's now 7-2. to 7-2 two. to two runs so far for the Suns over the game. I think our... What happened here? Did they not count the? I guess they messed up their box score here. Anyway, uh, Booker made a twenty-five three for that three, that's a three-point shot for him. Now let's get to Chris Paul. Chris Paul right now, who simply does nothing here early in his, in his first quarter here, besides the assist game here. But this was a Javale McGee, Cameron Johnson quarter, Devin Booker quarter. CJ McCollum made some free throws there. Made a three-pointer. It's twenty-eight to sixteen at the end of the first quarter. Second quarter. Chris Paul, I guess Chris Paul was not in the game, or he was entering the game, I guess, for Devin Booker. Chris Paul, 28 step back, jump shot, three pointer, makes it in 31 18. And what more can you say? Chris Paul again, 18 footer, pull up, 35 19. This was a runaway freight train. Cameron Johnson made the three points, now 42 21. This was a overall a Chris Paul night here, coming back, rebounding, assisting, mainly assisting here. I I, I think he had a and he had a layup at the end at 
before the end, before the end of the half. 53 34 at the end of the half year. And this was just Chris Paul just being Chris Paul. Nailing shot at the shot. He had 30 points, drill, drilling it perfectly. Just not just not really missing here. Able to hit the threes there. Four for six for three, 12 for 16 overall, 30 points for Chris Paul, 25 points for Devin Booker, eight for 19, four for eight for three for Devin Booker. Uh eight and ten for 15. One for one for three. He had 11 points. Or I'm sorry, 21 points. Sorry. Mikael Bridges had, had 11 points. Four for nine for him. Over three night for him. This is just not a good night for the Pelicans. Pelicans were overwhelmed. Ingram had 18 points. McCollum had 25, but he was nine for 25. Three for eight in the game for him. The Pelicans continue to struggle with the three. As the Phoenix Suns beat the New Orleans Pelicans 110-99. My takeaway from this game was that Chris Paul was Chris Paul last night. I mean, he was nailing every shot that he could nail, the, the two-pointer shots, jump back, fade back, three-pointers, assisting. I mean, really, it, it really wasn't about him scoring in the first quarter. It was about establishing, like, you know, who's the leader of this team and who can, and, and when he can put it on. And last night he put it on, I would say, between the second or second, the fir, early, late in the first half and really mostly in the second half. Um, the Suns just annihilated the Pelicans. Pelicans were no match for the for the Suns here. This series is, as far as I'm concerned, if Chris Paul plays like this, if this rest of this team plays like this, then I think the uh, then I think the Pelicans are going to be done in four games. I'm just going to be honest here, you know. And, and, and my first thought was New Orleans might be tough because now you got Ingram, you got McCollum, McCollum, and that was his performance last night. E gag, that was a really bad night for CJ McCollum last night. I said this before about CJ McCollum. He's living in Damian Lillard's shadow. He's not noticed as much. He's not featured as much on this team. As a matter of fact, he was an afterthought when Ingram had that great performance against the Clippers the night before. I mean, it it just I call it like I see it. The Pelicans are no match for the Suns. They're over, they're overwhelmed, they're overpowered. And if you got Chris Paul playing like this for now in his return game, playing 35 minutes last night, the Suns are gonna wipe the floor with that Pelican team. That's it. I had one more take on the uh, Brooklyn Nets and Boston Celtics performance. So Kevin Durant yesterday went um, after yesterday, and I just saw this yesterday. I just, I just, I had to bring this up. The box score for Kevin Durant again: nine for twenty-four in this game. Before I go off the air here, because I got, because I got to leave here soon. Kevin Durant yesterday played like the air equivalent of LeBron James, who chokes in big situations. I, I'm saying that yesterday with, with Kyrie Irving's performance. How is Kyrie not the face of this team? Everyone wants to look at it and say, oh, Kevin Durant's the face of the team. He's not. Kyrie is. Kyrie carried Kevin Durant yesterday. Hell, Ky Kyrie carried this team to start this entire playoff run so far. I mean, think about it. He had 34 points in the game against the Cleveland Cavaliers in the play-in. Then he has 39 here. And Brooklyn, by all accounts, yesterday should have won this game. There's no question about it. I'm a diehard Celtic fan. I'm glad the Celtics won yesterday. I'm glad they had two easy possessions towards the end of this game because that's how bad Brooklyn defense really is. And Tatum basically got around Kyrie Irving at the end of that game and got the win. Now, not taking away Kyrie Irving's performance, but that was on him. He could have guarded that a little bit better. Uh, could, have, could have jumped up and got the steal from, from Tatum. He didn't. He was right there. But – Durant yesterday I thought was disappointingly bad. And it's pretty obvious too because this is his MO at this point. You know, he struggles in these games like in tough games like this, nail-biting games like this. And you wonder, gee, what does that stem from? Why is he why does he have this issue? And it stems from when he were when you're up three to one in the series when you were playing for the Thunder, which he's still the face of that team, despite the fact he hasn't played for them in five or six years. I mean, what, what is there more to say here? He joined up forces with the, with the Splash Brothers and won a championship, and the only thing he, reason he got MVP was to stick it to the team. When you're an MVP of a team that you took over, you take over and you become the face of that team. He never was the face of that team. They won the NBA Finals back-to-back -back years that year. Then they went back to the NBA Finals. They lost the NBA Finals, and he tore his Achilles and left the team. Then he sat out for most of the year, and then he came back the next year, 
And I think, and in all accounts, it looked fan, it looked like he was going to win a championship with the Brooklyn Nets. I was convinced of it. I was convinced we we're going to see a Brooklyn Net Los Angeles Lakers NBA final. Until the game seven missed shot here, and ever since then, I think Durant it was getting back to his, his old self again. He was on all accounts doing great. Now we're seeing the Kevin Durant right now that, that ain't going to show up. That needs someone to carry it, and he will go right along with it, and he'll get the clutches moments here and make his moments count and get the MVP by default because and it's all about the clutch moments. It's not really about the overall performance throughout the entire game, but it's about the clutch moments in certain minutes in the game. And Kyrie Irving yesterday had none of that yesterday. Kyrie Irving was the man yesterday, 39 points yesterday. By all accounts, this team should have won. Hell, if you think about it yesterday, if Irving went six for six yesterday for three, and Kyrie Irving had the last shot, I, I would give Kyrie the ball now at this point. Kevin Durant had his chance yesterday to, to, to seal the win, get the Nets a game one win, win by four, and now I'm in the end of it right there because the Celtics would have never made the last shot. The fact that they didn't call a timeout in this thing, I had a really funny feeling that that, that was going to go to Tatum at the end there with the, with the last shot. By all accounts, Brown, I thought, was going to take the last shot in the game. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. Or Marcus Smart was going to take it. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. They got it out. They cleared it out there. And they set Tatum up for a, a pretty easy layup, I would say, for anybody. I mean, I could make that, for Christ's sakes. But all accounts yesterday, Durant yesterday played like an early version of LeBron James where he couldn't make a shot to save his life. And he forced a lot of mis- – and, and he had a lot of mistakes in this game. Had a lot of them. And I will say this after yesterday right now. I think Durant can never become the face of a team unless he's the leader of the team. And right now he's just been a follower for most of his career. Now the difference is LeBron James was always a leader. Even when his whole philosophy changed, his whole NBA lifestyle changed. He was always a leader. When he went to Miami, he was a leader. When he came back to Cleveland, he was a leader. He was a leader even when he was in Cleveland. And LA was the leader of that team, was a leader of that pack. Kevin Durant up to this point, I don't think he's been a, ever been a leader at any point. He's just been a follower, a follower, a follower, a follower. And even to a guy like Kyrie Irving who was almost kicked off the team. You could argue right now he was almost kicked off the team because the Nets wanted nothing to do with vaccination status potion, which I got to be honest, the whole vaccination status to me was just freaking stupid. They can only play road games. Now you can play it. it, it, it and I'm going to say this right now about, about the Nets. Kevin Durant played all season long. He could have he got the Nets back to a fifth to fourth seed, could have gotten to a number one seed. You're Kevin Durant. He's going to be the best player in the NBA up to this point. Why have you? And, and really, you played all of last year. So why are you, why are you right now at a seventh seed right now? Because you're not a true leader. True leaders get this team out of deficits, go over obstacles. He just doesn't have it in him. He used to have that when he was playing for the Oklahoma City Thunder. And I just have to say right now with with that mentality, I don't see how the Brooklyn Nets continue to win this series. If Kevin Durant plays like this, they're not going to win this series. Kyrie Irving can have a 50-point, 60-point game, and they'll still lose because Kevin Durant is choking in, in a big moment. Durant yesterday should have made that three point. That's an automatic make right there. In the exact same spot where he airballed it last year against the Bucks yesterday, he missed it again, right in the, right dead center. Could have made it yesterday. He had a total mismatch defensively, and he missed the shot. And I'm telling you this right now because I've seen this now with Durant now throughout the regular season too. It's not good. It's not good in his part yesterday to miss that shot yesterday. It makes him look bad. So I mean, I I can't see how they survive. The rest of this series, if Durant plays like if Durant keeps playing like this, they're not gonna win the series. That's it. Durant's gonna clean that stuff up. Um, yesterday he played like a, a, a younger version of LeBron James who was too big for his bridges, and he choked in when it when the moment count. He choked when the moment count yesterday. And I gotta be honest, you can't blame Kyrie for having to for being a ball hawk yesterday, and he was, you know, making mistakes of his own. That wasn't the reason the Nets lost that game yesterday, even though Kyrie was you know, with a total mismatch with Jason Tatum, where was Durant in that for? Why was Durant not covering uh, Tatum there or blocking the shot in the end? Nowhere to be, to be seen, if you notice. When you got an all-offensive mindset of team with an all-offensive minded coach, but he does play somewhat good defense in his career or great defense in his career, it's not a good look. It's not a good look for the Brooklyn Nets at this point. They played horrible defense towards the end of those two possessions there at the end of the game. I mean, you're up by three with about 45.9 seconds to go. You should be able to put that game away with, with what you have for talent. 
And what it showed me yesterday was Durant is holding that team back from doing what it needs to be doing. And I think, honestly, yesterday, the, 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 that team looked like an overachieving team yesterday as a seven seed. Because the Celtics should have won by at least by more in that game. Brooklyn, Brooklyn yesterday, by the way, was 11 for 24 for three. And Boston was 12 for 33 for three. So they did not have a good day shooting the three yesterday, Boston. Although however was one of the key contributors yesterday. That was the story here. Uh, Drummond did not do much in this game. It was three for four, eight points for him yesterday. And all I'm going to say here about this about the Nets here, I think, yesterday, is that Andre Drummond is supposed to be like this enforcer defensively. I don't think it, he is. I think he's just easy picking to this point in the paint. He, you're not getting the Andre Drummond – when he was in Detroit, you're not, you're not going to get him at all. He was a dynamite player in Detroit. You could, you could argue he was like a, like a, a Rasheen Wallace 2.0. That's what Drummond was, was in that, at, at that time. Um, uh, he had one block yesterday. That was really about it in two steals. He tried yesterday. I will give him that. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt there, but I just don't think Brooklyn's a good defensive team. They're a mess overall. And even when Ben Simmons does come back, if he does, because he's supposed to be coming back for the series, he better be a good defender. He was not really known for that in LSU, really. He was really known he was, and really not really known for it in his time in Philadelphia. And I don't know if he's gonna play for the Brooklyn Nets next season. I I, I couldn't tell you. I kind of hope he does. It'll be a lot, it'll be a lot of intriguement next season. And who knows? Maybe next season Brooklyn will be will be a contender next season. I, I, you know, I just can't see it now because after yesterday, if Durant keeps playing like this, and I don't think Durant's uh, mo, mojo is going to change if Ben Simmons is on me on the floor. Durant's been struggling now for a while. Because you want to know why? Because Kyrie Irving has taken over the reins at this point. He's now the leader now, and finally, for all those fans that witnessed it yesterday in the TD Garden yesterday, you can tell that Kyrie Irving led that team yesterday. He was the leader. He was the conductor. He was the he, – he might as well be the coach. Might as well be the GM. Feed me the ball, he said. And that's exactly what they did yesterday. 39 points for him yesterday. Uh, he had five rebounds. He had six assists yesterday. Six for 10 for three. 12 for 20 overall. 42 minutes. 42 minutes in that court yesterday. Durant yesterday, 41 minutes. What did he do in those 41 minutes? Terrible. Nine for 24. One for five for three. Got some free throws in there. That's all you can say, really. You're nine for 24. That's not good. That's not going to give you some wins. You take away at least three of those field goal attempts right there, and you add in the five attempt, five more made here, they probably would have won this game by at least by five or six points going away. And so to that I say the Nets blew it yesterday. Kevin Durant blew it yesterday. If Kevin Durant wants to establish now that he's not a follower, that he's a leader of this team, and he can lead his team to a championship win, He's got to step up here, and he's going to have to tell Kyrie, hey, this is my team. You came to my team. And Durant, I think, before even Kyrie even showed up on this team, and I, and I think here's the funny thing with this whole thing. Kyrie Irving was never going to play for this team. He just never, wasn't going to do it with James Harden. You want to know what he was doing beforehand at that, at that point in time? Trying to be a leader, but at the same time trying to like like not have that title, I think, because he doesn't want the pressure to be on him. Because he he's he's revisiting that 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 scenario where he was losing the NBA Finals back in 2012 to the to, to the Miami Heat with LeBron James, Bosh, and Wade, and how he was a leader of that team and he couldn't lead to save the leg because James Harden was distracted and you had uh, Russell Westbrook who was a ball hog and he was a complete moron. And here he wanted a point guard to be a because he because he could not do it by himself because he was not leading anybody that was good. He needed somebody that, that would help him out. And he was stuck with James Harden again. So he was like, oh, no. Kyrie Irving was a snuggle buddy coming out of this team for Kevin Durant. And here yesterday, this proved it because he had 39 points yesterday. This was the, this is the proof in the pudding for him. Um, but like I said, this was a absolute dynamite performance from him yesterday. The Nets should have won yesterday. Celtics were able to escape the win at home. And I think they won game two, the Boston Celtics. I think they do. I know they win game two. Game two is not going to be on until Wednesday. So that's that. Uh, as far as the game twos that are on tonight, we have a triple header going on today. Listen to this triple header. 
Seven thirty Raptors will be taking on the 76ers in game two in Philadelphia. Philadelphia up game uh, up one oh. Utah Jazz uh, still in Dallas for game two. Utah's up one oh. And the Denver Nuggets are playing at the Golden State Warriors game two. Golden State's obviously up one oh. And <laughs> the Warriors I have to say right now might win this series in five. I gotta be honest. I, I think Denver's just too weak. Denver's just too weak. So we'll see there. Uh, let us interrupt you. Episode 39 will be on tomorrow. Mike will definitely be on tomorrow, hopefully. I'm not sure what time we're going to record this. I'm not sure what time he's going to be, be available to record this. Uh, I'm only doing this now because I, I meant to do it last night. Unfortunately, I was too tired yesterday from the Easter festivities. Was exhausted. Did not, And I was too full yesterday. All the food I ate yesterday between the brunch at B40 and um, Going down to Connecticut and eating a dinner, it just and dessert on top of all that, and the drive home. I just said, "I'm calling. I'm calling it quits. I'm going straight to bed here." Um, and that was that. Um, uh, I will do a review tomorrow with the uh, podcast episode. I will fit in the NBA post stuff. I will be talking. I will be talking to Sean Watson tomorrow. Um, I will be talking about fan control football with Tara Owen. Uh, Tara Owen's getting his first. Or no, did I mention in the last episode? I think I mentioned the last episode that T.O. got his uh, first touchdown on the fan control league game. Um, uh, story about the USFL. I, I got to be honest. I was surprised that that was not on the ESPN thing. For that, for as much hype as that got, I heard a lot of reviews on it so far. It was meh. And really, a lot of people were a little aggravated by the name thing change because they figured, well, um, it had something to do with like uh, offending things and not offending Indian tribes and not offending this it, it, race. And this had nothing to do with it. The only reason why they had the names that they got right now, these, you know, pr um, prototype seem like 2.0, like average names or lame names and stuff like that, that you would probably hear in minor league baseball per se is because they didn't want to take it from the XFL, which by the way, is not going to start again until 2023 with the rock hosting it which I don't know if that project's dead. I don't know if that project is still going to be around, but I guess apparently they own the rights to those other other names they, they thought of. So the USFL couldn't take those particular names, the tribe and all this stuff right now, and the snakes and, you know, pythons, whatever the case may be, because there was an, oh, I, I think there was some rumor going around saying right now that the USFL was trying to talk, negotiate the XFL. XFL wouldn't go for it. I guess they're not working together now, I guess. I don't know. Um, I don't know if that's even, even true or not right now, but... There was never any race issue or woke issue there. Um, but anyway, as of yesterday, as of really the last two days, that was really good. Uh, the finale, I think, is on tonight because one of the games got rained out. I, If I can't get a scoreboard on that, I'm not going to be able to cover it because there's not really a, there's not really any big names on there. I got to be honest. Like, they're not advertising to players. Then they, I mean, I think Fox did a poor job of this personally. I think NBC did a poor job of it putting on the box score allowing people to view it on their phone. I think that was kind of dumb how they just didn't give a scoreboard next to the team of who was winning and who was doing well. I mean, cause I would have reviewed it if that was the case, but you know, that wasn't the case yesterday. Uh, so I'm just gonna, if, if I can't get anything uh, updated on it today, I'm not going to bother reviewing it. I'm not going to bother reviewing that. So, uh, so I'm going to be, uh, we'll be on tomorrow. Uh, and we'll be on Saturday. Basically, Tuesday, Saturday is our deal here. I will try to fit in some NBA post wrap. If not, I will just post the uh, stuff on my Facebook page. So I will post the, the games and stuff like that if I am too busy, to, which I, I might be. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do every single post wrap every week here. So uh, we'll see. Uh, until then, we'll see you all tomorrow. Enjoy Game 2 festivities. If you're a Sixers fan, good luck. If you're a Raptors fan, I'm sorry. Good luck. Uh, hopefully Dallas and Utah is an entertaining series. And hopefully Golden State gets, gets a win in game two tonight because I think they're going to win game two at home. Uh, have, a good, have a good day, guys. I'm out. Oh, and subscribe. Like this video if you like it. Um, follow me on social media. You know the drill.